And so once a price is set, the, the only way to improve your margins is to operate more efficiently. And so a lot of the work that I focus on around how do we improve our margins, how do we reduce our costs, how do we protect our IP and reduce complexity. So those are the two core drivers for, for a COO, I, I would say. Sid Patel here, live from Chicago, Cannabis Drinks Expo, the second annual edition. And I'm here with Ishan. Ishan is the CEO of a brand called Can, which is, I believe, the largest cannabis brand selling in That's America. Right. So we're going to talk about a very different topic here, a role of a COO. You know, how to run an efficient company, how to run a good operation and make a profit out of your cannabis business. Ishan, thanks for joining me here. Nice to see you. Thanks, man. So why don't you just introduce, you know, our community uh, about uh, who you are and how you started in cannabis? Uh, you know, what was that turning point? For sure. So, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Ishan. I'm the COO of Can. We're the largest microdose uh, cannabis beverage company in the U.S. And the turning point was about three years ago. My background is actually oil and gas. Mm -hmm. um, so I spent a lot of time on well sites, and then I was in a financial role on Wall Street. And I was looking at an industry that was, you know, structurally in decline. Mm -hmm. And although an industry that's very near and dear to my heart, cannabis was one that was in, you know, structural growth mode. And so the opportunity to build and run a business was mm -hmm. something that I wanted to tackle. And I think when you're taking on a project like that, it's critical that you have value alignment from a morals, from a trust standpoint with the team. And so I found that in the founding team of Can and you know, decided to join them and explore the cannabis space. And you know, it's been off to the races for the last three years since then. So let's start there. Like, did they reach out to you or you applied? And how did that first meeting go? Of course, it was through mutual friends. Okay. Um, and so I think it was a friend of a friend. They needed support on the operations side of the piece. And because I had the background in field operations from oil and gas, but also a financial skill set and a financial mindset, it was kind of the, the right fit of someone who could be strategic, but also roll up their hands and solve problems. Got it. I think in the early days of any startup, it's folks True. who can roll Everything, up their right? hands and just figure things out. And that was something that we had in common and, and built for a good partnership. Fair enough. You always uh, started as a CEO or you moved into that? No, I've moved into that role over time. And mm -hmm. so as my scope has expanded from running one facility to building out nationwide partnerships to now running a broad team, we have a 10 person operations team. You know, my, my role and the scope of my role has expanded and ultimately I became a COO about uh, early 2022. Fantastic. Um, and so I've been taking on a lot of more of the outwards facing development and business development that, that we try and tackle. Sure. So let's go right in the KPIs, right? Uh, what are you responsible for? You know, uh, what does your report look like? And what are you uh, like really going to be answerable to? Yeah, two, uh, two critical things are gross margin and cash management. Operations is the largest cash driver of the business from okay. a, both a revenue and a collection standpoint, ultimately in a brand like ours that's coming through manufacturing or licensing agreements. And so, you know, we're managing the cash in. We're also managing a lot of the cash spend from the raw materials and the procurement side of the business. And so the financial, financial team sits on my, you know, within my remit. And so I would say managing the cash flows of the business is, you know, critical. Hmm. And then we have the biggest driver on gross margin. And so once a price is set, the, the only way to improve your margins is to operate more efficiently. And so a lot of the work that I focus on around how do we improve our margins, how do we reduce our costs, how do we protect our IP and reduce complexity. So those are the two core drivers for, for a COO, I, I would say, especially mm. in this economic climate. Yes. Got it. Uh, your day, right? How does that, how does that look? I understand that it's, it's a growing company, fast growing company. So a lot of firefighting as well happening. Sure. Uh, a lot of people you have to follow up, you have to check. But just walk me over you know, uh, your your ideal wishful day that you would want, you know? <laughs> oh man, I don't think I have an ideal <laughs> or a wishful day. It, it's Every day is different. Um, I'm on the road constantly. Okay. I think about 200 days last year was, was how often I was on the road. Wow. I think the nature of the industry means that when you want to form a partnership, whether it's a vendor, uh, you know, a co-packer or a sales relationship, you just have to meet people face to face. The industry is so new. There's not a lot of inherent trust. There's not a lot of inherent systems. And so face to face meetings are sort of my bread and butter at, at this juncture in my in my journey. What does the team look like? Like uh, who do you report to and who reports to you? Yeah, so I report directly to the C CEO and, and really it's a partnership as we think about growing the business. And then I have a, a 10 person team that comprises of the finance team, uh, the legal team. And then they further have other people? Depending on the, the, the structure, the but yes, um, finance, legal, 
we've got project managers who help me with expansion as well as product innovation. Mm -hmm. And then I have regional operations managers who manage sort of the co-packers or the partners once we've established them, you know, throughout the East so Coast, you the Midwest. you have 10 direct reports. 10 direct reports, okay. yeah. Uh, it's a little hard, I believe, yes. uh, to make sure that all 10 are making sure, right, that their yep. work is happening. Uh, what kind of meetings do you do? What kind of mechanisms do you use to measure your entire team's progress? You yep. know, can be a, a tool or can be a weekly meeting. Just run me over some practical stuff that you do in your weekly meetings as well, please. Yeah, for sure. So I think there's three core tenants to my management style. I want to give the folks on my team autonomy to figure things out, okay. authority to make decisions, and I'm going to hold them accountable to those decisions and those like results. Mm -hmm. And so those are sort of the three pillars that I have of my team. From a meeting cadence perspective, we do a digital stand-up every morning. So oh. everyone has to report their priority for the day or anything they have a roadblock with, they can tag in anyone else on the team. To We have a 15 minute hold on the calendar. If no one is tagged, then no one has to join. If I need someone, I'll say, hey, I need oh, you on this a, time. Good strategy. And so we bring in the people who are required and we don't waste other people's time. Mm -hmm. We do a once a week operations meeting where we talk about broad projects and how we're tracking to the broad KPIs. And once again, we do 30 minutes with the whole team. And then after that, people are able to book 15 minute slots with me if they need to bring me in, if they need my approval, if they need insight or guidance. And then the final forum is that we do a weekly supply and demand meeting where we bring in key sales leaders. We look at forecasting. We look at how we're tracking to forecast, how we're achieving our goals. And so those are the three core meetings, you know, that we have on a weekly basis. But I think part of why there is no, you know, usual day, and I tell this to my team is like, I'd much rather have anyone on my team call me for 10 minutes than spend three days or two hours even going down the wrong path. Mm. And so although I'm constantly on the road, I think I try and be quite accessible. And that's what's allowed, you know, that plus the combination of just trust in my team has allowed me to, you know, both manage them, but also for them to really deliver the growth. Because at the end of the day, without them, you know, the company isn't growing itself. True. How much time do you spend in, uh, let's say, people side of the business, uh, motivating them, recruiting them, coaching them? Uh, apart from like pure emotional people, uh, sure. you know, one to one. Yeah, I would say somewhere between ten and twenty percent of my okay. time is spent on that. All right. And what about recruiting? Do you spend time, or it's a HR? That no, takes... we do spend time. Uh, you personally? Yeah, I'll recruit for roles into our team. Okay. Uh, I think each each manager or, or executive at Can has their own strategy for how they want to build their team, and obviously there's resources that support me in doing so. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think back to building that core team that trusts my that I trust, but also they trust one another, means that we're pretty involved in bringing the right people into the business. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, uh, technically you are running this, you know, basically operations wise and a lot of moving parts. Uh, yeah. Every day I personally have to challenge myself on, am I doing a high paying activity or a low paying sure. activity, right? It's just like that constant audit which you have to do every, every week or every day. And then there is a likability also, like I just want to do this, not that. Sure. I don't like that, for example, in reality, right? So do you have that kind of conversations with yourself and try to again and again align back to your passion and high paying activities? I think everyone has to. Yeah. Um, I think the high paying activities, I mean, that's kind of my job as an executive at the company is to help everyone around me prioritize, right? Because especially in a rapidly growing environment, the priorities shift True. hour by hour. And I think, you know, back to how I manage the team, it's, it's, you know, I'm holding them accountable and, you know, they have the authority to make decisions, but I need to help them prioritize what is important, what is not based on the changing demands of the business. And mm. so that's sort of how I, how I view, you know, my evolution of priorities. And then of course there's the things that I don't like doing as much and that's what planes are for. Got it. So let's, one last one. Uh, how do you identify high performers? Uh, you know, by just gut, usually it is, to be honest. Like, that's a fact. Like, you know that this person's a ninja and going to do it. And then obviously by their actions, this is just how I would do it. But do you have like any actual processes in place where you follow that, okay, three months I'm going to observe and then, okay, this falls into my A player and then so on. And then you kind of develop and push them because they want to grow as well, right? Yeah. I don't think there's anything so specific okay. or so uh, such a clear framework. I think everyone who we bring into the business has things they're really good at and things that they need to work on, myself included. And so it's really about developing those skills and seeing how quickly they are receptive to the feedback. They are able to implement the changes and up level themselves, uh, you know, according to the, the key tenets of what I would consider high performance. Mm. I think, you know, something that is not unique or is more common amongst the broader team that I think is critical in a startup environment is the folks who are just mission, you know, mission critical or mindset is finding the yes, right? 
I'm throwing an impossible ask at them and it's not True. like, hey, well, what about this or this? It's just like, okay, let me figure it out and let me present to you a solution here. Mm. And it might be crazy, it might cost a lot, it might take too much time, but at least they're coming and being solutions oriented. And I think once again, like we have to be action oriented and my team has to be action oriented. So that's a trait that I look for broadly. Nice, uh, one last one. You know, we've, we've, I, I believe, I mean, I don't know how your mix is, but I'm, I'm assuming you have some remote people as well now, sure. right? Uh, how are you trying to sell the belonging to the company? Because it's so hard, like remote, you know, it's so hard to motivate them and then they'll be, yeah, 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 but then again, gone in their world. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm really proud that, you know, we, we do a you know net promoter score amongst the company and my team tends to have the highest like internal NPS score. Nice. We're also fully remote. So what got, is that, like elaborate? It's just, you know, if folks basically relay feedback on how likely they are to recommend working at CAN okay. to a friend. And um, it's, an, it's an indicative measure of how excited someone is about the company, about True. the org. Um, and we've got folks all over. I've got folks in Rhode Island and Arizona and you know California and Massachusetts. And so our ops team is, is actually fully remote because of the, the nature of the operations Correct. of the business. And I think you know it's really, uh, part of it is you know my guidance. We like to have fun. It's a work hard, play hard culture. But I think like we've developed, or folks have developed strong relationships on the team and they really support one another. I think part of what makes a, a good environment is that there's no ego involved and mm. if someone has a problem people are willing to step up and help them and that builds camaraderie that builds trust amongst the team and then folks are excited to come in and solve problems with their peers sure uh what's your definition of a good manager i think someone that you know can help set clear strategic goals can help their team prioritize amongst those goals and can ultimately you know support where needed but be pretty hands-off when when not needed